This is lab number seven, respiration. We are going to be doing an online lab, of course. Oh, that goes, does go without saying, doesn't it? So you're going to go to this link, you can click on it, or you can copy and paste this one into your web browser. Uh, I want you to know this right at the beginning before you even start. After you have completed all of the steps in the experiment, you will need to design another experiment based on these methods. Two to three paragraphs. So number one, based on these methods, meaning uh, you need to make sure that you understand the experimental setup and the apparatuses involved. Next, the procedure, two to three paragraphs. This is a guidance in length. So uh, if you wrote the most unbelievably succinct uh, paragraph then, and it was a long paragraph, then maybe it could be just one paragraph. But uh, just guidance is l l very likely it's going to have to be about two to three paragraphs to share a brief and silly story about my writing career in university. Um, I was required to do a writing competency course for uh, my bachelor's degree. And this thing I had to write, it had to be five pages. And so I got to about four and a half pages and I thought, geez, it's not long enough. And so I just kind of made up a bunch of stuff. I found some more sources and I made it to five and a quarter pages or something. And the instructor read it and he told me, what's up with the last uh, last half a page? He, he wouldn't pass me until I deleted the last part. So uh, don't start making up silly things to make it uh, to make it long enough. Um, this is guidance only. OK, um, I did eventually do well on that, but it was, <laughs> it was a little bit silly. I found myself making up a bunch of nonsense just so just so it was long enough. Anyway, <clears throat> how to turn in this lab. You're going to copy the questions and write your answers onto a Word document and submit it. Alternatively, you may take a picture of your handwriting, but make sure it is clear enough for me to read. If you're using a flash, the flash can sometimes white out certain parts of the writing. So you need to uh, take a close look at, uh, at your photographs of your handwriting. Just make sure that uh, they're visible. So far, I haven't had any problems, but um, there's a couple that were sort of close. All right, so what to turn in. Part one. Uh, there's going to be part two and part three. For this lab, you'll be writing a procedure of the following. So number one, uh, you're going to, and that's, that's the only step, you're going to design an investigation using a respirometer for how you would determine how temperature affects the rate of respiration in mice, mus muscularis, this is the binomial naming system, genus, species, versus the southern alligator lizard that uh, I just looked up lizards in Oregon and that was one that came up. Elgaria multicarinata. Be sure to include the following. Relevant controlled variables and you're going to need to just think about what they are. Um, usually uh, something like two or so. You could kind of go on and on and on if you were really looking for them, but generally in, a, in, in a, an assignment setting, Something like two relevant controlled variables is good enough. Uh, dash two, a description of how you'll keep the controlled variables the same in each experiment. So the reason I've added this one is a lot of times students will simply say something really kind of like cookie cutter, such as uh, the relevant controlled variables are I will keep the um, food source the same and I will keep the animal size the same. Uh, so that's great, but you need to say how you would do that. So if you want to keep the animal sizes the same, you need to say, I will control for animal size by weighing them and making sure that the animals are within 5% the same uh, mass. So be specific. What do you mean by same size? How, how much the same size? They obviously can't be exactly the same size, right? Uh, an experimental control, I want you to think about what that is. Uh, state what the independent and dependent variables are, and lastly, a hypothesis including an explanation. So, for example, why is it that you think whatever it is you think? For example, your hypothesis could be um, the lizard has a much more rapid respiration rate at high temperatures than the uh, mouse because lizards love heat. Uh, you did. I did just explain my hypothesis, but saying because lizards love heat is not really a, a detailed enough. So try to relate your your hypothesis and the explanation. Try to relate it to uh, science, preferably science we've learned. Um, doesn't have to be in this course or 
preferably science that you have learned in a course, uh, but of course you guys have learned things in all sorts of um, uh, circumstances. Uh, part two. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention one thing on that last slide. And another part of uh, the experimental process that your book mentions a lot is a randomization. Randomization. And uh, all parts of the scientific method are not as equally relevant for each different experiment. So, for example, randomization, what does that mean? Are you going to randomly choose mice from the forest or something, um, you could come up with a way that it might be relevant, such as you will randomly assign which mouse you test in which respirometer, uh, but sometimes they're just not that relevant, so um, they're not, not required to really address. Um, same thing with experimental control. Almost always you'll want to have an experimental control, but um, on that last lab that we did on enzymes, you notice their, their setup doesn't have an experimental control. Uh, honestly, I would say they should have an experimental control. And in that one, the enzyme lab, it would have been uh, enzymes in solution with no substrate. And therefore, you should get no product formation. Or you could do another one where you put substrate in water. And again, you should have no product formation. And we can kind of continue on with uh, more types of uh, experimental controls on that one. Anyway. What to turn in part two? Write down and answer the following questions. Pretty easy. Oh, dear me. This should be one, and that should be two, and that should be three. Sorry about that. Uh, what is the function of... I'm not going to read through these. Um, Got to answer them. Turn them in. Part three. Go to each of the links. These are, these are those McGraw-Hill animations. you got four of them. Uh, and this is somewhat of a review of the theory behind the lab, which is, of course, covered in our lecture. Respirometers. So, how does a respirometer work? We can kind of see what was going on there. Uh, let me describe to you what happens. So, there's only one opening, and that is right here. One opening, just one opening, and a water can go into it. So, this is a water bath. Water bath. Uh, let's see. Let's discuss what is it, what, why is it useful to have a water bath. Uh, water baths control temperature. So again, when I said uh, you need to talk about controlled variables, this is a pretty obvious one. I will control the temperature of the experiment by putting the respirometers in a water bath kept at whatever it is you want to keep it at, 20 degrees maybe? I don't know. Um, so saying that you'll use a water bath, that would be an acceptable description of how you'll control the temperature in, in a given scenario. All right, so water bath controls the temperature, and what is this apparatus? This thing is a respirometer. There's one opening, as I said, and this is a, a, a bung, kind of a rubber sort of stopper, except that it has a hole in it so that you can insert this thing in there. Uh, there's going to be numbers here, such as like one mil, uh, two, three, um, and as water goes in, you can measure how much water has entered. Next. Uh, inside of the respirometer, number one, it is sealed, except for our one opening. It is sealed. Number two, the uh, subject to be measured is placed in it. In this case, it's an insect. And as the insect respires, it is going to consume O2, and it is going to produce uh, CO2. So what we want to do is we want to be able to measure a decrease in the air in, inside the chamber. That's what these things do, respirometers. What they measure is they, they measure uh, a decrease in air, or more scientifically, we could say gas, gas volume inside. So they measure a decrease in gas volume inside of the respirometer. Now here's the problem though. Um, if we are consuming O2 and at the same time producing CO2, then we are not going to be getting an accurate measure of how much O2 is consumed. That's what we're measuring here. How, how much? How much is consumed? We're measuring it indirectly. We don't actually have a device in there that can measure, say, the concentration of oxygen or anything. All we can do is just measure the decrease in air volume inside of this whole apparatus. 
objects, including including the um, uh, tube here. Okay, so what happens is as the insect produces CO2, we have this chemical here that is going to absorb the CO2. So any change in gas volume inside of the chamber is going to be a result of oxygen being consumed because as the CO2 is produced, it is absorbed and is converted into, uh, is this a solute or a solid? I think it is a, I think it's a, it can be a solid if there's no water present, but it's dissolved in like kind of a watery tissue napkin. Anyway, it's not a gas. So uh, all the change in the internal volume is due to oxygen being consumed. Potential problems with respirometers depends on what kind of respirometer you, you are using. Some of them can be nightmarishly annoying to deal with because uh, if you have any kind of leak and some gas is escaping into it or escaping into it, that doesn't make sense, and some gas is leaking into it, then your measurements are going to be all wrong. So potential problems, um, and this would be, um, uh, 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 never mind. Uh, potential problems would be leaking, leak, leakage, uh, leak uh, of air in. That would be a problem if this is not sealed tightly. Now, you usually use some kind of oil or wax or something, and it's really sticky and gross. This is a lab where you should be thankful it's online. It's, it, it really can be annoying. Um, so we don't want air leaking in there, and I guess that's the only place it can leak in. In conclusion, uh, as the insect consumes oxygen, there, the volume of air inside the chamber goes down and water flows into this tube and we measure how far it has, um, it has gone into the tube. In this case, it has gone all the way to here. And then we know how much oxygen has been consumed. Okay, that's a respirometer. Next, when you go to that link that I mentioned in uh, one of the first slides, uh, you'll see a, uh, see a web page that looks something like all this stuff. And part of it's cut off here. There's some more writing up there. And basically, uh, the, uh, the hyperlink brings you to specifically this step, design of the experiment. And you'll just read what's on the page, and then you'll click Next. That'll bring you to the next one. And then it gives you a little bit more information. Uh, one or two of them have a little animation. You can click on it, and it'll show you something happening. Then you go to the second step, and then the third, and then, you know, you get where I'm going with this. Um, these are the steps you need to complete. Complete all these steps and take notes on them. This is not going to be a lot of notes. It needs to just be enough notes so that you can write up a, a procedure for the, for the part one that I wanted you to do. So, um, not too tough. Uh, Let's see, down here there's a lab quiz, and you do need to take that quiz, and uh, I'm not asking you to demonstrate that you have taken that quiz, but it is really going to help solidify your knowledge of this subject, and as such, uh, information discussed on that quiz is free range for the end of term practical exam. Practical exam means a, a test on lab stuff. Okay. This is a screenshot that you will see in one of the steps, and I thought I'd just talk about it a little bit. Uh, we are sh shown here is how to set up the respirometer. Now, when you write a procedure, so your procedure that you're writing, procedure, I can't spell and talk at the same time. Um, when you write your procedure, you do not need to describe each and every single thing over and over. You can say something a little more simple as I will um, set up a respirometer that has KOH in it that is secured to the bottom by some tissue and then the subject will be above it. Uh, and then, you, of course, you don't need to say that that's what I'll do for, you don't need to repeat what you have said for each different test tube. I hope that's clear, meaning you don't need to repeat yourself. Don't be repetitive. Okay, so what is going on here? Number one, in each of the three vials, soak absorbent cotton with potassium hydroxide solution. So there's cotton here, cotton here, uh, no cotton there. I can't remember why that was. And then same thing here. So now we're going to cover with a dry non-absorbent cotton. So this separates 
this kind of chemical that is in here, potassium hydroxide, from any subject that you're going to put into here. In this case, it is peas. You're putting peas in there. These ones are live germinating peas. And when peas start to germinate, well, what it means is they absorb water. And that means that they get bigger. So you might say, I'm going to put 25 germinating peas in here. Great. Good that you added a number. And then in this one, this is one of the controls. You're going to put 25 non-germinating peas in here. And they explain that you also need to add some glass beads to it. Why is that? Well, you're going to need to add glass beads because controlled variable. Controlled variable is, one of them is, gas volume. Uh, as the gas inside of any of these chambers decreases in volume, water is going to flow into it. And gas is something that is very compressible. So the more of it you have, the, the way that it's compressed uh, is different. That's more topic for physics, of course. Point being, you need to control for gas volume inside the respirometer. So they put some glass beads in there so that now we can compare what happens when you have germinating peas versus um, just peas that are dry, not germinating. And then they have a second control here, which is what happens when you just put glass beads in only that are of an equivalent volume to the other two setups. So we have one, two, three experimental setups. And then lastly, they put in the cap, uh, the bung, and the, um, uh, I'm failing to remember the name of this thing. I apologize for that. It is a, a pipette. It is a, it's a pipette. Pipette, it's not quite right. Uh, anyway, not on the exam. <laughs> okay, so what you're going to do next, what they will show you uh, next is, you're putting each of your setups into water that controls for the temperature. And you also need to submerge the tips of these respirometers uh, below the surface of the water so that as the air in here decreases in volume, well, this is the experimental control, so we hope that one doesn't. But as the air decreases in volume in there, water will flow in. Uh, water will flow in and we can measure how much water flowed in and that tells us how much gas i.e. oxygen was consumed some of you might be wondering well you said this tip is open so why doesn't the water just sort of start flowing in right away and then the air bubbles out and that has to do with water's adhesive and cohesive properties uh, water tends to stick to itself and so it, it, this tube is narrow enough that it sticks to the walls uh, above, below, to the left, to the right, and it sticks to itself, and so it basically won't uh, flow in. I, I don't want to get into too much of a description of it because uh, it's it is ancillary to the assignment. Alrighty then, so that is it. This is a fairly simple lab this week. Um, so I hope it is not too challenging for you.